Hi, my name is Bob and welcome back to the homestead, y'all. We love the changing of the seasons and our favorite season is upon us and that's hatching season. Um, we love to hatch eggs, all kinds of eggs from all our fowls here on the homestead. So I thought I would take a moment and show you a few of the incubators that we use. Uh, we do have one that's missing from this lineup because we already have 16 pheasant eggs and two turkey eggs. So we fired it up yesterday and cleaned it up real well and we already have eggs in the incubators but it's basically the same as this incubator right here so i can show you the modifications we make to these little styrofoam incubators we've used these incubators for years and years and they've done well a few years ago we got a good price on a cabinet incubator this is a G older gqf cabinet incubator and i'm going to do some modifications to it today to help improve it make it a little easier for us to incubate eggs in but I'll, I'll bring the camera closer and I'll show you some of the modifications that we, we make to these little styrofoam ones. These little styrofoam incubators are great. They do a great job. We used them for years and years. You can hatch off a little over 30 eggs at a time in them. And, and, and they do a good job. But if you're going to do a lot of eggs, I would definitely recommend getting a cabinet style incubator. You can do over 200 eggs at a time. You can get the different size trays for the different size eggs and incubate them all at once. But what I wanted to show you is our older incubators, the old styrofoam, and then this is one that I purchased at a yard sale this past year. It's missing the, the, the plexiglass plates, which I, I can cut that real easy and put it in. And it was missing the uh, power cord for it. And this is a special type power cord, so I'm gonna have to hunt one down Hopefully I can find one pretty easy, but I was able to pick this up for $10. It already had an egg turner inside of it, which if you have one of these styrofoam incubators, I definitely recommend getting the little egg turners that go in them. It already had this one in it. I plugged it in, that, that egg turner works. Plus it had three more egg turners that went with it and it even had one for quail eggs. You can see how small these holes are here. So it had one for quail eggs. So I'm really excited to use this on my quail eggs and pheasant eggs and, and get to hatch them. Makes it a little easier to, to put them in. When you have a bigger style egg turner like this, then it makes it a little harder. But now in the cabinet incubator, we do have some smaller trays that we can put in there for the quail eggs and for the pheasant eggs. But I was able to get three extra egg turners plus the egg turner that was in it plus the styrofoam incubator for $10, so I couldn't pass that up. So I'll bring the camera closer and I'll show you the modifications that I make to these styrofoam incubators. I'm gonna make the same modifications to this one, and then we're gonna modify this cabinet incubator and I'll show you what we're gonna do on it. Start off with our old incubator. It's a little bit dusty. Um, I need to clean it up where it's been in storage all winter long, but I'll give it a good cleaning. And we clean these on the inside with a mixture of half and half bleach and water and just spray them down and let them dry out for a couple days before we use them. And they work well. But what I wanted to show you was I, I take and I put a digital thermostat in them. This is an Inkbird thermostat. It's a 120 volt thermostat. And I drill a hole in the back and I put a, a tube in with a little cork here. Now this tube goes to the bottom of the incubator. So I can pull this cork out, or Christy can pull this cork out. We take a turkey baster with some distilled water, and we squirt water in there, and we look at the humidistat that's inside, and, and if, if it needs more water, we just put a little bit of water in here, and we don't have to open the incubator up to put water in. That's one of the modifications we make, and I'll lift this lid, and I'll show you how that goes down in. It goes down in behind the egg turner, and goes right to the bottom of the incubator and that, that works great. So that way we're not constantly having to lift this up and down to see, um, to put water in it. Like I said, I take the old type thermostats out of these. It has a wing nut on it and a metal thing and a little metal disc that expands and contracts and keeps the temperature in there. And you can see somebody even took a magic marker and put an arrow on here and put hotter. So that way they turn it to the left that made it hotter. With the Inkbird digital thermostat, you just set it and forget it. You can set it right at 99 degrees or 99.5 or 100 degrees, and, and these work great. I've used these now for probably about four years. I'll put a link in the description below to the ones that I use because Inkbird's not the only one that makes them. There's several companies. Probably the same company makes all of them, and they just put their logo on it. 
Okay, let's open this up so I can show you some of the modifications. This is the tube I was showing you on the side, on the top. It comes down, goes down behind the egg turner, and that way we can add water to it to increase our humidity when we want to. You can see this is the fan I've added. It has its own separate plug, so I plug it in separately. And then this is the Inkbird digital thermostat. If you're gonna change these out, take the old saucer type thing out, take everything out, all but your heating element. One side of your heating element hooks up to this side of the contact, run your other side over to the other heating side of the contact, and then to the other side of your um, heating element. And then your two power cords come in. They have a little diagram, a little schematic on the back side of this that you can't see, but there's one on each one of these. They're pretty self-explanatory. And then this is the, the probe that monitors the temperature. But if you have any trouble wiring that up, if you want to wire one of these up, just shoot me an email or leave a comment below and I'll, I'll take you step by step. I'll help you wire it up. But if you know anything about electricity at all, these are very simple to do. And I highly recommend changing those over because it'll make your life a lot easier. But if you're just gonna do one thing to these old styrofoam incubators to help improve your incubations and your hatch rates, it would be the egg turners. An egg turner is well worth the money Go buy you one, look at yard sales, estate sales, wherever you can find one, go ahead and get one because these make life so much easier and they definitely improve your hatch rates. But I like doing all three. I like putting the digital thermostat, I like putting the egg turners and putting the little tube in. That way it goes to the bottom and you can increase your humidity without lifting your lid up. So. If you have any questions on this part, leave them below. We'll go ahead and go over to the cabinet incubator and I'll show you it real quick. Okay, let's start on this side of the incubator. This is your thermometer here. It, it goes in and I'll show you when we open the door, the thermometer for it. This is your thermostat and this is still the old style thermostat that has the round disc in it. And we have it locked down pretty good because we have it set. I don't, I haven't modified this one yet, but I'm going to. I'd planned on doing it this winter, but I had too many other projects going on. I didn't get to it. And then this is your power cord coming in with a light that just shows that you have power to the incubator. Now this is the other side of the incubator, the cabinet incubator. This is for your egg turner. And then it has a light right here. So that way, if you have your egg turner on, then, and the light is on, then you know it's in automatic mode. Now, if you go up with this, it's a momentary, you can just bump your egg turner and move it a little at a time. And if you go down with it, that means it's in automatic mode. And then we just drilled a hole in here and we have a hose going inside to the, to the water tray. So that way we can fill the water tray up without opening the door to the incubator. Because on these cabinet incubators, when you open this door, it really lets a lot of the heat out and it takes it a while to get back up to temperature. Okay, so now let's look inside the cabinet incubator. I want to talk about some of the modifications I'm going to make today. This has a solid door. We can't see inside it. So I'm going to take and I'm going to cut this out in the center of it. Just take a jigsaw and cut it out. And then I have two pieces of plexiglass up top here that I've pre-cut. And I'm going to mount them, one on the inside, one on the outside. And then sandwich them together with just some nuts and bolts and washers. So that way we can look in without having to open the door. Cause like I said before, when you open this door, the heat just comes all out of this and it takes it a long time. So I'd like to be able to look in there. Christy and I both want to be able to look in there so we don't have to open the door as much. And I'm also going to mount some LED lights. I'm going to take two strips and go down the inside, just on the outside of where I mount the, cut the plexiglass holes. So that way we can reach up here, put a little switch in right here flip the switch on and we can look in there and check on our eggs. But this is the inside of your cabinet incubator. This is your water tray. This is where the uh, temperature gauge is coming in from the outside. So the thermometer that you, you, we looked at on the outside, this is the probe for it. So this is where it's actually taking the temperature from. And then each one of these trays slide out. We keep a, another hygrometer in here and another thermometer in here so that way we can double check. I always like to be able to double check and then we have a digital one that we set down here in the lower trays so that way we can make sure the temperature is pretty even. 
But if you look, these trays slide out. There's different size trays you can get for the different size eggs. Each tray slides out. And you can see we have the, the bigger ones here. That's for the bigger eggs, for the peacock eggs, for the turkey eggs, and then for your regular eggs. And then we also have different size on the third tray on the bottom also. So we can put different size eggs in here. Plus we have two or three of these spare sets like this that um, one of them is for quail and pheasant eggs that we can put in here. So when we go to hatch our, hail, our quail and our pheasants in here, we can just swap those out. And then the very bottom is for the, your three day lockdown. When it's time to lock them down, you take the eggs out, put them in here, and this is where they actually hatch is down in the bottom. Of course, this has an egg turner. All these shells are connected in the back and it has a little small motor that turns and it turns these eggs twice a day. So when you have it in automatic mode, you could open this door and they may be twisted all the way this way or twisted all the way the other way. So today what I wanna do is I'm gonna pull this door off here. And like I said, I'm just gonna cut the center out. I'm gonna leave about two to three inches on each side and then three or four inches on the top and on the bottom. And then I'm just gonna take my jigsaw and cut this out once I get my measurements. And then like I said, mount these two pieces of plexiglass. I figured I would use two pieces. So that way I can sandwich them on the outside and on the inside of this. And it won't let as much heat out having that air gap between them. I'll take a little bit of silicone and go around it. It probably won't be the prettiest in the world, but that way that'll seal the air all the way around this on the inside and on the outside. And hopefully it won't let a whole lot of heat out. And then I'll just take and put my two strips, LED strips and run a wire over here and leave a little bit, put a strain relief on the door and put a strain relief on the cabinet. So that way it holds the wire and then mount my switch right here. Just drill a small hole and put my toggle switch on. So after I do those modifications to this one, I am going to put a digital thermostat in this one, but I think I'll wait till after this hatching season. So that way when I do it, I can have plenty of time to test it. So that may be a project I do next winter. But if you have any questions or comments on this, on incubating or on the modifications of the incubators or projects, leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.